Hello, welcome back to The Hatch. I'm Sammy Roth. And I'm Rosie Murphy. This is the podcast where we talk about Lost. This week we've got Season 1, Episode 20. It's Do No Harm. Uh, Jack is trying to save Boone's life, and it is very intense. Let's get right into it. So as always, we start with hot takes, uh, our, our strongest reactions to the episode. Uh, Rosie, you, why don't you go first? What's your hot take? So this is very similar to one of your hot takes from last week. Uh, in the same way that John Locke knows so much random stuff about everything, how does Sun know so much about botany <laughs> and medicine? Like I knew it. I knew you were going to talk about Sun. Oh, sorry. Really? I, I, this has been hinted at before when she's known some things about herbal remedies, but like... We don't ever find out in a flashback that she was a physician or a nurse or anything like that, do we? I don't I don't think so. It it is kind she of just strange. It's very impressive. Yeah, no, and it saves a number of lives, arguably, or just like leads to a lot more comfort than people would otherwise be in. But yeah, she's just a wealth of knowledge, which th- thank God, but yeah, no explanation. Yeah. Okay. I, I I was gonna I was gonna start by predicting that Sun was gonna be your hot take, and then I forgot. I wish <laughs> well, I, I wish I had done it. <laughs> so I don't know if we want to go into this, but like, assuming that I, I'm right, and like we never find out that she does have a medical background, like, is this a little bit racist? Hmm. Like, am I wrong to ask that question? That that the Asian woman like knows the herbal remedies and yeah, stuff. Yeah, the Eastern remedies or whatever. Like, yeah. Mm. You know, I I hadn't thought about that, but now that you bring it up, yeah, it's a pretty s- strong stereotype going on. I'll I'll change to a more positive hot take, which Please. is um, which is just that I thought that Evangeline Lilly was like tremendous this episode. Okay. Um, and I know it's a Jack episode, and like we'll talk about Matthew Fox probably, but. <laughs> just like right from the beginning, J- Kate, for first Kate had their Evangeline Lilly had these two like wonderful sort of like what the fuck reactions. Um, first, when oh that's she right, she sees Jack stab stab Boone in the lung with the you know to open up his lung, and she just her look the look on her face. I thought like wow, that's probably what my face looks like right now. Mm-hmm. And then also, it was just the scene where she delivers Claire's baby. Yeah. I just was. Um... Do you want this baby now? <laughs> You want it to be healthy and safe. Okay. Because your baby knows that too. You're not alone in this. We are all here for you. This baby is all of ours. Really powerful, and, and she's got, you know, so much sort of passion and vulnerability, but she handles it so well. I mean, it's a great moment for Kate, but mm-hmm. I was just, you know, really, really impressed by the the acting throughout. I have nothing to add to that. Then let's talk about Jack. 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 Uh, is there a place where you would like to begin? So I think there are two things. There is Okay. There's obviously Jack trying to save Boone, and then I think there's Jack's marriage, which is a related but separate issue. Uh-huh. Um and I am interested in both okay. of those things. Um, so so maybe the 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 takeaway that we're supposed to get from that flashback is when Christian sits down next to Jack by the pool when he's struggling right. to write his vows and he says, commitment is what makes you tick, Jack. The problem is you're just not good at letting go. This um, is a good place to start. I agree with starting here. Sure. Like, this is obviously the thrust of the episode. Um, yeah, commitment is obviously what makes Jack tick. I I don't understand why letting go would matter in that moment, but I, that's not the point. Well, I maybe it is the point. So I mean, I think it's it's obvious how that statement applies to the saving Boone storyline. Right. He he right. just he, he can't let it go. He's, you know, he's got to save everyone and everything and he, you know. But with with his marriage, I I was thinking a lot about what what Christian is really saying there and uh-huh. and what it means. And I I guess my my first reaction to it is he I guess the question I was trying to answer was how 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 does Jack marrying Sarah like how does he see that as part of the the act of saving her life like why after he saves her life does he feel like he then needs to marry need to marry her as well right. it seems like those things are related right well and he confides in Christian that you know am I marrying her because I saved her life um, and Christian asks do you love her and he says yes but. That fear is definitely still there, and even even the next day when he goes on to give those like 
contemporaneous vows and he says, I didn't fix you, you fixed me. Like, that's a nice turn of phrase, but it's also, like, mostly untrue. Like, he did, in fact, like, literally fix her. But, like, I don't know that we ever see evidence that Jack actually changed for his marriage. And, in fact, that's, we'll we'll get that more in the divorce flashbacks, but he was not able to lessen his commitment to his work. And that was part of what mm. drove them apart, wasn't it? I, I think so. I, I, to be honest, I don't have strong recollections of those yeah. later flashbacks, but that sounds right. And I, but yeah, no, I also found myself wondering, like, what is he even saying when he's saying "you fixed me"? Like, what I was just, fixed? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. It's, it's. You're right. It's a nice turn of phrase, but it's very hollow. Yeah. Um. And, and so when Christian says to Jack, "Commitment is what makes you tick. The problem is you're not good at letting go." I, I was wondering if what that means is. You know, he should have been letting go of Sarah before this, that he should have, you know, saved her and then Mm. moved on and not felt like he still had to be committed to her after that. Hmm. Which is maybe a dark interpretation because it means Jack's dad would be telling him the night before his wedding you shouldn't be getting married. Well, Jack asks him point blank, should I marry her dad? Yeah. I kind of thought that was his way of saying no. But it's... Jack obviously doesn't interpret it that way. So I'm going to just set that down for a second and pick up a couple of other thoughts that I have about the flashback. One is that at the rehearsal dinner, Sarah does that toast to Jack where she calls Jack her hero. Um, And obviously Jack is a hero archetype. He feels obligated to be a hero to everyone he meets. But, like, isn't that a bit problematic in the context of a marriage? Like, Hmm. um, wouldn't, like, is it, like, far be it for me to criticize anyone's marriage, but, like, doesn't that mean Sarah is eternally in Jack's debt? Like, what what is that Hmm. power dynamic? Um, And I, I was wondering about this. There's very little Jack, Kate, dialogue in this episode thank god um but like how does this inform the relationship jack tries to have with kate like does he try to be her hero he kind of does he tries to protect her all the time right and kate rejects that because she's been fending for herself for many years like and i wonder if that's i'm thinking specifically of the scene in exodus when they're carrying the dynamite back and Jack lies to her and he puts the yeah. dynamite in his own pack instead of just letting her carry the damn dynamite. Um, and like, why, why does he always try to do that? Not only in his capacity as a doctor and as sort of a natural type A leader of the group, but also in his personal relationships, he has mm-hmm. to be a hero. That's super interesting. Yeah, you know, you're right. We've had that conversation, like, several times this year about moments where Kate is, like, obviously able to do something for herself, right. and Jack, like, no, you can't do that. I'm going to do that. Right. Um, it's like he doesn't know another way to function. Right. Right. And maybe he doesn't, and maybe that's what this is all about, right? Like, he's always been this way, and... Well, you know, the, I was thinking about the title of the episode, which is Do No uh-huh. Harm, and, it, you know, obviously the Doctor's Creed or whatnot, but it kind of seems like for Jack that the way he interprets it is prevent all harm to everyone, everywhere, at all times. Oh. Um, and, uh, I mean, with, with Boone and with Sarah and with, with Kate, um, now that you're, you're bringing that up, it's like he... It's like he has this... He feels like his obligation is to be everyone's hero and to... You know, stop anything right. bad from happening to anyone. Right. Which is not it, whereas, what do no harm means. <laughs> no, it's it's do no active harm, right? It's not do not allow any harm to befall anyone. Do you think Jack knows right off the bat that it's a losing battle? So that's a really good question. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. Um, he knows it's severe, obviously, because he jumps into action. But... I don't know I don't know at what point he should have been able to call it or if he ever should have been able to call it like Jack seems to approach his work 
as, well, like you said, like I need to do everything in my power and like take that to the nth degree. Um, everything in my power, including giving my own blood, including performing an amputation, whatever the case may be. Um, well, maybe, maybe here's uh, your question. I, if, yeah. if Aaron had died or if Claire had died, if, if the uh-huh. delivery hadn't gone well, but Jack had saved Boone, I wonder if mm. you would have been satisfied by that. I don't know. That's a really interesting hypothetical because could Jack say, would Jack ever say, well, Claire Aaron's death wasn't my fault. I wasn't there. Or would he assume that guilt no matter what? Because interestingly, what we see at the end of this episode is Jack storming off into the jungle. He was murdered. I'm going to find John Locke. I mean, Jack isn't feeling guilty about, or he's not feeling responsible for Boone's death. He's feeling, I think, inadequate. You know, he he feels like he should have been able to save him, and he couldn't, and he didn't live up to his own expectations. So he kind of has to blame John Locke, because that might be too much for him to bear. Or he just blames John Locke, because there is some evidence that he should. I mean, Um, also true. (laughs) But, yeah. I I think this also makes, to go back to Jack's marriage, I think that if I'm remembering correctly from the later flashbacks, I think one of the reasons it's so difficult for him when they when they go through the divorce and the marriage doesn't work out is that he, it, you know, it's, it's, it's Jack's fault that it doesn't work out. And I think it's right. hard for him to accept that and to accept his own responsibility and blame. He still thinks it's something that that can be fixed, that has to be fixed. And, and I think you sort of see that as well at the end where even though Boone yeah. is dead here and Jack feels responsibility, he's still thinking like, no, I can do something about this. You know, there's still a way to, yeah. you know, not fix it because Boone can't be brought back to life, but at least go and hold, you know, someone else accountable for it. Right. And Jack wouldn't see it as revenge. He would see it as accountability. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Jack is not great at accepting fault. No, you're right. He isn't. Hmm. I don't know. Do you like Jack more or less after watching this episode? Uh do I like him more or less? I mean, I'm, I'm impressed by his commitment, which is the po- again, the point. Um, I'm impressed by his, I mean, there is a bit of an element of self-sacrifice, not only in like literally giving Boone his blood, but also in, um, making the decision not to be there when Claire has her baby. And like, there is some personal sacrifice in that which presumably he'd much rather be doing that than, you know, amputating Boone's leg. Um, So I do think there's stuff in here that's clearly noble and admirable. Um, But this flashback is complicated for me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the writers wanted us to feel from that flashback. You know, I feel like I can usually tell, and in this one I can't. I'm with you on that. I, I was having, I was thinking as well that it's usually a flashback is like designed to make the character more sympathetic, and to or at least to make a point about the character, like which is very clearly borne out in the present. Right, but here it's it's not clear. Like I watched this flashback, and I, I certainly don't feel more sympathetic to Jack because of the flashback. And you're right, it's it's ambiguous what the takeaway even is. Yeah, which I mean, maybe that's the point in itself, right? Maybe part of the point is. Yes, the structure of this show is that Jack is our hero, but, like, unlike some of the other characters, like, his morality is not black and white. Like, I I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. His morality almost seems more like obsession. Less that he has this, less that he has, you know, like a, just this incredible moral compass and more that he just he he has to save people because it's the only yeah. thing it's the it's like the only way he knows how to relate to them i think you made huh. that point earlier i think i'm ripping that from you that's fine um no you're right that's exactly what it does here this this yeah this this makes me see jack less as a hero in sort of the 
moral, ethical, like Captain America sense and more as a doctor who doesn't really know how to be anything but a doctor. And sort of yeah. applies that to all of his life, including his personal relationships. Nothing he does here is necessarily worthy of blame. He's no. just, you know, for I mean, fortunately, Boone was sort of aware enough to stop him from amputating his leg, right? Like, because he could have... That was so heartbreaking, by the way, when Boone yeah. says, I'm letting you off the hook. I'm not going to let you give up. I know you made it. Yeah. Yeah, and and that works amazingly. Like that is enough to sort of absolve Jack of the need to save him. Which I'm kind of surprised by. Like I I could easily see Boone saying I'm letting you off the hook and Jack saying like, "Nah, man, I can I got this. I can fix this." Same. I had actually like, forgotten that that's what listened. wasn't happened. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yeah. It is amazing how, like, Christian just totally nails Jack with that line about commitment is what makes you tick. You're just not good at letting go. I mean, it's just perfect uh-huh. encapsulation. He really gets it. Yeah. Can I? Do you mind if I bring up the, the finale again like I usually do every episode? <laughs> I, can I stop you? Probably not. No, Commitment not. is what makes you tick. Ha, ha, ha. I am not. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I mean, just the, the language about letting go, I mean, it's it's – you know, fairly straightforward, but I mean that is the language that that Christian uses with Jack in the church at the end. Um, You're right. Yeah, this this is a, and I, I've mentioned this before, so nothing really new for me here. But like, you know, this is a place you all made re- to, together. Why to remember mm-hmm. and to let go? Huh. Um, and and just before we got on the the call to talk, actually, I, I rewatched the you know, the scene where Jack gets his memories back in the church. And uh-huh. it's just interesting because unlike everyone else who, like, immediately, you know, has those flashes back to the island and, like, remembers and mm-hmm. accepts and, like, is totally at peace, like, in one moment, um, Jack, when he, he touches Christian's coffin and start to has, have those flashes, unlike everyone else, he rejects it. He pulls his hand mm-hmm. away. He looks really surprised. He doesn't like it. And then when Christian starts to talk to him, he's like, oh, I'm I'm dead and and everyone else is dead, and he he really doesn't like that and has trouble accepting it at first. And it's, you know, you can see right there that more than anyone else, Jack is super having trouble with with letting go and just, you know, accepting right. where he is now and that he's dead and that they're all there together. And so, you know, when you have Christian here in, in season one telling Jack, you know, the problem is that you're just not good at letting <laughs> go, <laughs> it, uh, it it really works nicely as this, this arc for the, the character that that's where he ends up. Yeah. Good connection. Yeah. I guess that's my hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I have a, I have a couple of hindsight items, yeah, actually. Yeah, so um, Pertaining to Claire and Kate and Charlie and company. So one, um, when Claire is about to, to deliver, birth, to give birth, uh, and she says... It's not going to want me. It knows I don't want it, and I was going to give it away. Babies know that stuff. Um, and Kate is able to tell her, like, do you want this baby now? And it, she gives her this beautiful little quick speech because they need to deliver the baby. Um, like, this this marks a bit of a turning point for Claire, I think, who... I mean, the the whole arc of Claire's character is they're going to take my baby they did take my baby Kate took my baby I need to get my baby back <laughs> um, which oh, yes. is heart heartbreaking and I hate watching um, as she devolves but it's refreshing to remember that Claire was so sort of innocent of all of this at the beginning, like she was on a plane and she was going to give this baby away for adoption. And she's really forced in like a matter of weeks to come to terms with the fact that she's going to be a mother. Um, obviously, she's been you know pregnant this whole time, but n- never intended to raise this child. 
Well, you know what that um, makes me think is the island really fucks up Claire by the end of this. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yes, it um, does. But no, you're right. This is totally the moment where that all starts. Yeah. Yeah, where she has to speak aloud, like, yes, I want this child. Um, and sort of commit to this new role, which is going to be very much twisted over the coming seasons. Oh, gosh. But, well, and Kate, during the scene, also tells Claire, like, this baby is not just yours. It's all of ours. We're all going to help you. <laughs> and then, of course, Kate literally <laughs> takes the baby and, you know, not steals the baby, like, does it benevolent, benevolently, but... um. Benevolent baby theft. Yeah, it's fine. Little Rumpelstiltskin action. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I found myself thinking about that a lot over the subsequent days after I'd watched this. That's interesting. Well, you know, I, that also makes me think, and I, I had that thought as well, but the other finale thing is that I, I was thinking watching the, the birth scene that, that that is also the moment that, that brings Kate and Claire back together and that makes them remember their their lives when Claire is giving birth. Oh, you're right. Flash sideways and they both flash back to that moment because once again, right. it's, you know, which is, which is really nice. Right. But that's, but that's what treasure, they treasure that moment so much. I don't know. I wish I had better takeaways here about Jack, but I'm just stuck with this idea of like, Jack is committed to a fault he is unwilling to to i i don't want to say let go again but to let go and why i mean why did that become jack's like driving principle do we know that um probably because his dad was such a shitty father i mean that would be my guess yeah. i'm not sure in what way specifically but <laughs> <laughs> I just, does this, I always, yeah, does this go back to, like, you don't have what it takes? I was just or... about to say. Yeah, I, I think it probably does. Yeah. He's always got to prove that he has what it takes. Right. The other thing that is difficult for me about Jack that I'm just sort of crystallizing now is Jack is fundamentally kind of selfish. Like, hmm. despite... You know, it's it's so easy to assume that because he's a doctor and because he, you know, we, we see doctors as this, you know, great, great profession of service. Um, but really, when Jack gets into this place where he can't let go, it's really about him. It's not about Boone. It's not about, I think in a later flashback, we see him operating on Sarah, Um and when he he thinks he can't save her and he just like self flagellates over that for for quite some time. I think that's the scene where he goes running and meets Desmond. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Um like I I don't really know where I'm going with this, but but Jack when he's and not even only when he's being a doctor, like even when he in the, in the flashback, when he makes his vows, when he finally makes his vows, like they're mostly just about him. He says very little about like who Sarah is and why he loves her and why he's marrying her. It's it's mostly just about him. And that is a bit of a, a weird thing to reconcile with your hero doctor character, but. I think that is the best way I can crystallize so far what I don't like yeah. about Jack. Yeah, weird. I think weird thing to reconcile. There's a lot of that. Yeah. It's because it's on, it's on the one hand, it's like even if he's totally selfish and that's why he's doing all these things, it's it's hard to blame him for wanting to you know save everyone out of selfishness. Like right, it's it's still like yeah, the outcome it, is still good. <laughs> right, it's, but, it's still admirable that he wants. Like you said this earlier. It's admirable that he wants to save Boone's life. It's admirable mm -hmm. that he you know commits to saving Sarah and actually does it when it seems impossible. Mm -hmm. But it's it, it's it's hard to love him for that. Right. I was just going to ask if you know your blood type. <laughs> you know this is bad, but I don't. I think maybe I'm A negative, but maybe I'm just thinking that because that's what they were talking about in the episode. I was kind of <laughs> thinking that might be my blood type. Well, do you know yours? No, but I keep, I have like an American Red Cross donor card that I keep in my wallet, which has my blood type on it. I'm one of the O's, 
Um, <laughs> but I just keep it in my wallet, like just in case I'm ever like in a car accident or something and they rush me to the hospital and need to know my blood type. There's a handy card in my wallet, which, which says what it is. Listeners, do you have thoughts about Jack? We, we know that, you know, Jack is, is, everyone has a different take on him. We want to hear yours. Mm-hmm. Give us a call, 9546-DHARMA. That's our, our voicemail inbox. That is 9546-DHARMA. Leave us a message. We'll, uh, we'll play it on the next episode with your thoughts about Jack. Please keep watching with us. Uh, as Sammy mentioned, you can call us with your hot take. Um, if you are not in the U.S., you can just record a voice memo on your phone and send it as a message to facebook.com slash the hatch podcast uh yes we're also on twitter give us a follow at uh, at the hatch podcast um rate and review us on itunes we love to hear from you uh our theme music is by andy g cohen our cover art is by danny roth we will talk to you soon namaste namaste